Have you ever wished you could go back in time with the knowledge that you have now? Have you ever wondered how different your life trajectory might have been if you knew back then what you know now? If you can speak to a younger version of yourself that's just about to embark on whatever journey you're currently on, would you do it? And if you did, do you think they would actually listen to you? I bet a lot of you resonate with these kinds of questions. I know at least I do. There's a ton of things I would love to tell my younger self. And in this video, I will share with you the top seven things I wish I knew when I was first starting out as a software engineer. Hello everyone, and welcome back. I started my software career back in 2014. I was 20 at the time. And when I look back at that ambitious younger version of myself, who's just about to start his software career journey, I can't help but think, if only I could pass on some of the lessons that I have learned along the way. I might be able to help him cut around some corners or maybe even avoid some of the mistakes that he's about to make. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This one is actually a big one for me. I don't think I started particularly late, but I also don't think I started particularly early. I wrote my first line of code back in university in 2014, and I think I probably would have wanted to shift that date somewhere to high school or even middle school, like some of the people that I know. And I would have wanted to do that for a couple of reasons, actually. First reason is that I really found myself in this analytical slash problem solving stuff, and it would have been nice if I found that out earlier so that I could do more of what I enjoy basically. Secondly is that like any other skill, the more experience you have and the more hours you put in, the better you'll be at it. So if I actually started earlier, I probably would have been farther ahead by now. And the general rule is that it takes 10,000 hours of doing anything before you're considered an expert in it. And so the earlier you start, the sooner you will begin at stacking those hours. I still fall into the perfectionism trap often to this day. Although, to be completely honest with you, I think I've gotten a lot better at focusing on what I like to call messy learning. But I'm still a work in progress. I used to, and I sometimes still think, that I need to be 100% prepared before I can jump into doing stuff. So let's say I'm preparing a meal, for example, and I'm following a particular recipe. I will often find myself having to read through the entire recipe to make sure I understand it thoroughly before actually starting to make the dish. And this, for example, would translate into a real life career situation like if I were to do a project in JavaScript and I don't know any JavaScript yet, then I would wait till I finish an entire course on JavaScript to make sure I understand it properly before starting the project, rather than just jumping it into it and figuring it out along the way. And this, in my opinion, is not actually the best approach. There's a story about a pottery class whose teacher divided it into two halves. One half was told to spend the entire course studying pottery, planning, designing, and trying to create the best pot while the other half was told that they would be graded based on the number of pots they're able to produce during that course. So the first half jumped into research, planning and designing, trying to create that perfect ideal pot, while the second half literally started to grab fistfuls of clays to pump out as much pots as possible. At the end of the class, both halves were invited to enter their most perfect pot into a competition. And to everyone's surprise, all the best pots came from the half that was told to produce as much pots as possible. Like in any field, experience is king. It is always better to jump in and just figure it out as you go. You will learn much faster and you will retain information better. Following that same logic in coding, it is much more beneficial to just start working on a project once you have the basics down and figure out the specifics as you go. Uh, this one's a tricky one. Let me address it this way. Do I think that it was necessary for me to go to university to become a software engineer? Absolutely not. Do I think that for me specifically, it was a waste of time, money and effort? Yes. If I had the opportunity to do it again, would I drop out of college? Probably yes. But I will still get some other less workload or shorter duration degree. And the only reason I would have gone through that ridiculous amount of unjustified efforts is that back then I was in Egypt. And my goal at the time was to relocate to Europe, but the Egyptian emigration required that I hold some form of a college degree to be able to relocate. So that was a, really a no-brainer for me. However, if I actually didn't go to university, I would have invested that time that I gained back in, in working or coding and leveling up my technical skills, which I sort of did alongside university anyways. I actually think this is probably why I managed to land the software engineering role that I wanted right after university. 
but honestly I would have much rather preferred to have more time to prepare and code without having to worry about the never-ending piles of deadlines, projects and all the classes that I had to attend. Like I said before and will probably keep on saying, experience is king and what truly makes you good at coding is the amount of hours you spend coding and, and nothing else really. Much of what I studied in my engineering degree was deemed outdated the moment I stepped foot outside of the university. To be completely fair though, there is some overlap between what I studied in university and what I currently need as a software engineer. But everything that I needed from these overlapping materials, I only truly internalized when I learned on the job. You barely retain anything from the content overload, which seems to be a recurring theme for most universities' curriculums. But you do actually retain what you get your hands dirty with. Okay, I'm done bashing our educational systems for now. Going to university might actually be good for you in two particular cases. Case number one, you are like me and come from a country where emigration is complicated and relocation is something that you seek. Case number two, and this is really person specific. If you're the kind of person that needs the structure and timetables that university curriculums enforce, then by all means, university might actually be good for you. Personally, that wasn't the case for myself. The structure and the deadlines were too restricting for me and I knew what I really wanted to do and had the motivation to do it, but just didn't have the time. This is one tip that I carried with me throughout this journey. And it's something I somewhat still personally struggle with to this day. I sometimes fall into this trap of thinking that what if I'm not smart enough or that people that I work with are way smarter than I am. This apparently is a common thing in this field and it's called imposter syndrome. Trust me, I googled it. It is honestly very surprising to me that even six years in, I still think that way sometimes. Back when I was first starting out, I used to sometimes shy away from applying to certain roles because I didn't think I had what it takes to be successful in these roles. And I would be very intimidated by them actually. And this came in phases. So I would go through phases when I would feel like I truly didn't belong or that I would be exposed for not having what it takes to like maybe solve a bug that can't be repaired or something. And on the other hand, I would go through phases when I would feel like I'm the best and that this is something that I'm truly good at. Especially after I realize I've pushed thousands of lines of codes that have a significant impact on the business that I'm working for. Or when clients compliment a feature that I worked on, for example. And this cycle kept on repeating itself over and over and over again. What took me a while to, to realize is that this never-ending cycle of doubt and confidence is all part of the process. And everyone goes through that even if not everyone talks about it. I've put a lot of work in improving my confidence in this particular area. I've improved a lot, but I truly wish I took more risks and put myself a little bit more out there when I was first starting out. Because I wish I knew that rejection is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Oh, this is a good one. You might think this is a very trivial tip. Of course, you should only accept positions where you like the company culture and the project that you'll be working on. Why am I even bringing this up? And I'm here to tell you that as someone who has fell into this trap so many times, once there's a significantly higher paying offer on the table and you start thinking and fantasizing about all the possibilities of what you can do and all the things that you can buy with that extra money, these morals and ideals that you hold so high to yourself will come crashing down. Then you will convince yourself and rationalize that it's definitely a good opportunity for you even though you don't like the culture and the project that you'll be working on and even though these are literally almost exclusively the only factors that matter when deciding whether you should accept an offer, it will still be good for you because it will challenge you and get you out of your comfort zone. Now, I'm overgeneralizing here, I understand. Some folks still won't budge if they're not fully sold on the company culture and the future work. But I'm not one of those folks, or at least I wasn't, which is why I wish someone told me that it's not worth it. It's not worth it to work at a place where you will be unhappy with the environment that you work in and, and the kind of project that you're gonna be working on. Because these are literally the only factors that you need if you want to grow and unleash your creativity. You can't really buy these things with the extra money that you'll get. This year has forced me, like I suspect is the case with many folks, to dive into myself and to face my inner demons. And I think if there is one thing I can really take out of this surreal experience is a better understanding of myself. I as a person thrive when I'm always working towards goals and I don't really find fulfillment in idle time. 
And consequently, this burning ambition fire, sometimes more than often, made me overstretch myself trying to achieve these goals. So what would happen is that I would go through phases of strong progress and very quick improvement, followed by burnout and almost no progress at all. Then a while later, that burning ambition fire would be reignited and burn very strongly, pushing me forward very rapidly until it burns out and the process restarts again. It took me quite some time to internalize what it's a marathon, not a sprint meant. And I'm glad I was able to find some kind of balance. It's better to have this burning ambition fire, but not all the way. That way you don't burn yourself out and you're able to progress while still enjoying what you do. There is no point in overworking yourself. Once it hits 6 p.m., close the laptop, get out, meet friends, watch something, go run, do whatever it is that makes you unwind. This is not only software engineering specific advice, but I think it applies to every endeavor in life really. I wish I knew this advice back then because it would have truly improved the quality of my life. In the beginning of my career, I treated being a software engineer like a job that I have to do. And not until maybe halfway through my career that I started to look at it from a different angle. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself to love this process. It will bring me much more fulfillment if I do. I will get better at it faster, which will then make me drawn to love the process more. And this will make me better at it and so on. And I would find myself in this upward spiral of positive reinforcement and growth. Loving this process also means accepting the rejections, the downs and the frustrations as much as accepting the successes and the rewards. The only thing that matters is that I show up and get shit done and I will eventually be where I want to be. If you enjoyed learning about the lessons that I wish I knew when I was first starting out as a software engineer and you want to learn how I stay productive coding for hours on end, I highly recommend checking my coding productivity video where I share my top three tips on productivity in coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.